Well-prepared veg beds can increase your wealth. Come, heed the words of the wise old elf. Here he is, Joe. What are you up to, mate? Well, we're just spreading manure for winter. Spreading a bit of chisel. Yeah, so I've roughed all the beds up. Because loads of people leave the... Once we've grown all through the season, if you reckon we've took a load of nutrients and stuff out the soil, and as daft as it sounds, when you're pulling stuff out, you always lose bits of soil as well attached to the roots. Yeah. So your soil level drops in all your beds. Anyway, I believe in pits for turn it all over like mountains, then the frost, the cold, the snow, the winter will help break it all down. But then I cover it all with manure that me and Bill went for on Wednesday. So we got six trailerfuls of manure, brought them back, piled them up outside. Yeah. Then I came back on Friday, lumped it all up on top of the beds. So the idea now is that when winter comes along, with all the cold and the snow and everything, anyway, it can all get rotted down and integrated into the soil. Yeah, it can replenish what's been lost, yeah? So that is basically it now. Just go along each bed, cover it all over. And that manure, is, is, there's uh, very, very few... Uh, Turds in it. So yeah, horses eggs. There's no like horses the, eggs in there. Look behind us, I've done one, two, three beds there. So they've all been spread and covered. So there's one a bit here in front of the leaks, but those two have been done. I've done that one. That'll probably need some more because it's a big bed. Yeah. So the reason I haven't done that at the moment, I'll spread this all over and then wherever might need some more, I'll just go and share it round. But it's just to cover the beds, get some nutrients back in. It's really good stuff. It'll rot down, bulk my soil up and that's it till March. I'll just leave it alone. And uh, let it work its uh, natural magic. Let it work its natural magic. And it's not rocket science, it's just cover the soil. So, when you go picking it up, this is obviously well rotted stuff. Well, it's, so, a guy, it's a guy with the stables up at Hay. At Hay, yeah. Yeah, which is only like a mile away from us, isn't it? Yeah. So, he's got a couple of stables. They've no horses anymore, but they've had horses there for God knows when. So when they bring all the fresh manure, straw, turds, everything, out of the stables, they just run up a little bank and tip it. Right. And then gradually, over the years then, yeah, and it's still going on now, all the manure gets, it like rolls down to the bottom, keeps getting piled up on top of, yeah. But if you drive past, it just looks like a grassy green bank. But obviously the grass is grown on top, it self seeds and moves around. This is like a mountain of bloody horse muck. It's just a bank that looks like a grassy bank, but when we go into the bottom, yeah? Yeah. All the manure over the years that's tumbled down, gets squashed and squashed and squashed, it gets all the weather again, and it just breaks it all down. So all this stuff now, Probably a few years old, well, isn't it? Donkey's that? years old, but it's very, it, you know, it's exactly what I want. Yeah. And very it's, crumbly, isn't it? Yeah. And there we go. That's more or less what I'm going to do to all the beds. Full of nutrition, that, wasn't it? Yeah, so they're all going to get done. So when I leave later on in a bit, they'll all look, they'll just look like this. Yeah. So before you did, you put the manure on it, you, you jug it all over and put it into mounds. Yeah. Because you can see there where it's all been dug out. Yeah. Even where the old strawberry bed was there, that was all dug out, turned over, so it all got to lumps and bumps. Yeah. So the strawberries were here but hadn't done as well this year. So I turned all the bed over, yeah? Yeah. Because that's the new strawberry bed there, yeah? That's right, yeah. You transplanted well, them across, yeah, didn't so, you? Yeah. So the blueberries that are in buckets, 
that have ericaceous compost there in here. Right. A bit further up there you can still see where it's, it's rough and ready. Over there I want a bit more but it's all lumpy bumpy and then it can all work its way down into the soil. Yeah because the digging over does help it to sort of get into... Yeah because your soil's compacted. So yeah. Where, where those leaks are now, there's three quarters of a bed full of leaks there for winter. When they come out, if you think how much goodness these leaks have to take, because there's some bonny leaks here. He says, pick them up. I didn't catch that, you're right. You're right. <laughs> right so there's, there's some bonny leaks here, but they've took all the nutrients out of the soil. Yeah. Yeah? And it doesn't matter if it was cabbage or leeks or anything, but they've took it out of the soil. They do like the nitrogen, don't they, the leaks, the alliums? So. So, so what I'm doing, I'm just replacing the goodness that's been to take the soil. Yeah. And by turning the soil over, you open it up. If there's any, uh, what can we say, bacteria, bugs, whatever in there, there might be a bit of club root as well, but it'll help to break it up. The frost will kill, hopefully, 90% of what's in there but you're just replacing, replenishing your soil. So in March now, it's just a case of a gentle turnover and a rake, and then get planting with whatever's gonna go in each bed. And the good soil biology, the micro rhizal stuff, will grow back. So you're not, you're not like destroying the ecosystem by doing that, you're just getting rid of the... Because I, I, I notice when you do turn it over, grubs and stuff like that, the little the little Tweety birds come in and they'll eat them, won't yeah, they? That's it, yeah. So, like I always say, whatever I've grown here in these beds this year, yeah, and I've got 10 beds up this side, so I just got two A4 sheets of paper, sellotaped them together, drew 10 envelopes, and wrote down what I put in each bed. Right. So, come March now, next year, I'll get this year's list out, yeah? Yeah. I'll draw the same list again, but with nothing on it. But I will then put in that. I won't put in the, the same crop in the same bed each year. Just a case of rotating the crops. Yeah, so you are rotating so it. So you, If you think these allotments have been here, what, 140 years? Yeah. We all only have so much land. And I've said before, invariably, we all have a little bit of club root. So we definitely have to rotate the crops. And then where I plant all my brassicas, cabbage, collie, broccoli, sprouts, as we know, you do it now, which you've seen me do it before. Yeah, put the lime. I put a spoonful of lime in, so the club root then, because the roots underground then, when they're going down, the club root doesn't attach to the plant root. And the lime is good for deterring, it doesn't completely, but it's good for deterring the club root, keeping it down. And it's all about... Because management of management, it, yeah, because yeah, we, we all learn by mistakes. Sometimes we're lucky we can put a plant in a place and it works, but generally sometimes things don't work. But if you can just prep up, and this is now it's winter time, it's winter prep. So once this is done, that's virtually all my beds prepared, they're all ready for next spring. The rest then is just bits of maintenance. And the, the, like you're saying about club root, the thing with club root is it can stay in the, if it's untreated and unaddressed, it can stay in the ground for 20 years. It's there for life, Tony, yeah. It's there for the duration, isn't it? It's there for the duration. So they, they, they say it's um, in sort of wet and claggy soil, it thrives in that. But my soil is, is pretty open up. And again, this bulks your soil. Look, once it gets in, rather than the soil being not heavy but and not sticky together but it opens the soil up and deteriorates it yeah because once that is in then and it's it's all going to get mixed in now so the nutrients are there the goodness is there from the manure and the roots can work their way through yeah they can find a passage through they can't they through. it's not rock hard it's not clay because lots of people don't turn the beds over yeah but joe does there's different methods, isn't there? There's the no dig. I've not, I've not really researched this no dig thing. That's a big thing at the moment, isn't it? Well, what some people the Charles Dowding yeah, stuff. Because what they would do, they'd take the crop out, yeah, and I maintain that 
here my soil is rock hard but with no dig yeah they don't turn it over they leave it as it is yeah they might put the manure on top to be drawn down but I still think that that compacted soil is harder for the roots of whatever it might be to work through yeah well that's just Joe that's Joe's way that sounds right though that what you're on about doesn't it because you're not you're not aerating the soil. Obviously, the worms are going to be doing their bit, but they're not going to be doing as much well, I don't aeration, are they, as no, you I do? I don't think so. So I'm a firm we'll believer. See. Turn your soil over, get some air in, let the frost, let the water, let the everything get in your soil. If there's anything that it can kill, it will. But, yeah, now is just a case this morning. Probably an hour now, we'll see all these beds done. And that's a big, big job out the way. I've cleaned the greenhouse and I've done all my beds. I've my little greenhouse, my nursery one, done just to tidy up. Right. Because that just wants to clean out and uh, take everything out, put it back in neat and tidy. And then if we get two or three dry days, all my posts that I use, yeah, they'll all get repainted and stained. My shed will, my little picket fence. And it's just a case of work it, make it look good tarting it up well yeah, tarting it up go to B&M's and buy some cheap uh, wood stain what's that cost us, seven or eight pound a tub we do everything yeah, you can get the Ron seal from there quick, pretty cheap, yeah, can't you? yeah, it's about six or seven quid but I'll use the Ron seal on all the posts that I use for my espalier there's a bit of a picket fence there that will get done yep, then the centre yeah, because that's looking a bit it's looking multicoloured now. But that's only because of sun and rain. So these are the winter jobs you'll be picking up, aren't they? All the sort of paint ups and yeah. wood preservation. Yeah. So straightening your poles and that. Everything will get done. Yeah. And if I do it now on you know dry days like this morning, it's better being up here out in the fresh air, keeping socially distanced, yeah. But it's better than stopping in and looking at four walls. Of course it is. You're avoiding the COVID anyway up yeah. here, aren't you? And if, if this is what you're into, allotments and growing and whatever, <coughs> it's just part of the process. Yeah. And everything is a process. It's 90% preparation, yeah. isn't it? It's all about prep. 10% perspiration or whatever they call it. Right. <laughs> so that's it. That's just what it is. Belting, mate. Last nice one. Right one. Well, thought we'd do a bit of a quick catch up. I saw you. I saw you mucking about, literally. Yeah. Well, that's all I'm doing. Spreading muck this morning. That's usually Ken's job, isn't it? That. Well, shit shifting, yeah. <laughs> right, boys and girls. We'll see you later on. See you. Take care. Have a good time, mate. We'll catch you later. So there we go. That's how they do it in Rivendell, and it's the dig method, Joe's method, with the wise old elf himself. It's worked for him year upon year upon year. He always gets fantastic good crops from that land. So uh, there's a lot to be said for the no dig method. And I'm not knocking that in any way. But that's the elvish way that you've just seen there with Joe. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll catch you next time on the Little Farmer's Farm. Alright boys and girls. Um, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. I'm Guru Mafinda. You've been fantastic, beautiful, fragrant as always. If you're a lady, you've been strong, handsome and virile if you're a man. And if you're something in between, you're something in between, aren't you? Catch you later. Bye-bye now.